Hi, this is Peter again. I just want to add this little bit of a video onto the first video that I made about the, the mill stop, video number one. I, I left a few things unexplained in that video and I need to explain them because this is something that you really need to understand in order to understand what your tools are doing when you go around parts with a, a lathe and a milling machine. And we'll probably get into this in a little bit more detail even further than this, but I just want to add this on to the first video. So, because I left it unexplained, I said I'd get back to it, but the video was getting too long, and I, uh, I just wanted to get it processed. You know, it takes so long to, to process these videos and to upload them to the YouTube and everything, and I just wanted to get it going. So we could show some machine, you know, a little bit of machine work. This video actually won't have any machine work in it. It's it just has the explanation of what I didn't quite explain in the first video, just to add on to it. But I think the purpose of these are kind of to show you how to set up and program the machine. And later we'll get into much more machine work, believe me. But this one I just want to add on to the first video. So. Uh, that's all this is going to be about. Thanks. Um, practically in every lathe manual, on a CNC lathe, the programming manual that you look at, you'll see this picture. So let me draw the picture and then I'll explain what it means here. they'll have a one, two, three, four, five, six, and a seven, and an eight here. And there'll be a dot like this for each one of these. Now what this is referring to is the quadrants of tip compensation for a lathe so that your tool is compensated for for it mostly has to do with angle cuts and such more than it has to do with just straight 90 degree shoulders because you really wouldn't need it if you touch the tool off let's say let's say you have a I'll draw this this say this is the tip radius of your insert of your tool and maybe it's an 80 degree diamond tool which would have angles something like this on the tip of it right It'll go like this and back and normally you'll touch this tool off on the face of a part here and then you'll turn an OD to set the diameter of the offset in the X axis and you'll touch the face of the tool on the Z axis so the machine actually only knows where that point is on the tool so in your tool offset page you you have a um, let's say a X and a Z and then you have this other thing they call a tip on the offset page and you would set your X and Z whatever you measured but the tip on this tool if it was touched off this way on the face of the tool and the end, end of the tool for the OD would be a number three which would be this number three in this quadrant of compensation so you'd be turning with a G41 or a G42 to there <clears throat> now so these numbers there's also one more number that goes with this they usually don't draw it in here and if you were had no compensation which I'm not really sure why you would use that because you could just give it a G40 except that it would be it'd be more like programming the center line path of a of a milling tool and and the center of the radius is considered a number zero on the offset page so if you had a number zero here then that would be actually the center of the radius so you're you're kind of saying to yourself well what's the importance of this well let's say you have a part that has an OD 
then you have a turn like this and maybe you're, you maybe you're coming down a thread relief or something like this and this is the shape of your part like that well on this OD turn here if, if we if, let's blow this up much bigger here if we have the tip radius of our tool if we want that to follow the OD of this chamfer in the proper place the lathe actually thinks that the tool is right if we draw these lines and take the point the tool tip point for this compensation so it's going to cut along here right it thinks it's cutting along there but it's really cutting out here so in order to compensate for this discrepancy depending on the size of the radius when you're using G41 or 42 the, the, the control will actually move the tool in and it'll follow this path if you were just of course um, not using tip comp and you wanted to cut this profile it, it would actually leave extra stock out here like this because it's actually following this path with the point of the tool because this is the way this is the only thing it knows basically is the tool is right here but it can calculate this distance based on the radius you give it in the tool offset page which actually you'll have another entry called a radius up here if you remember on the first video there was a on the Haas control there was an XZ and an R for radius and then they had this taper thing and then they had this tip um, number here and that tip number refers to these numbers right here but say say you want to come down an angle like this with your tool well this number three won't work too good for that because it'll actually be following this profile and it doesn't really compensate on the back side here like this when you use a number three so it's going to come down here it's going to cut a little bit too much off your part right here by bringing it down because it's trying to bring the, the radius tangent to this so the radius would be sort of like this when it brings it tangent to this start point of this horizontal line and then up the face so it would work for this diameter in this face but it would cut too much material off of here so in this case you would be using a number eight and it would compensate all the way around the the radius of the tool but there's a, there's a difference in the way you touch the tool off if you're going to use a number eight for this let's let me draw a picture say say you were you had a 35 degree diamond tool something like this and you want to use a number eight compensation on your on your offset page you would you would probably touch the tool off normally like this but then you would have to set the Z offset in to get by the radius of the tool on your offset page otherwise because see when it when it you have this compensation on here it actually going to move the tool back by the amount of the radius so if you if you try to take a facing cut straight down it's going to actually move the tool back when it makes a cut or if you come in like this it's only going to come in to the center of the radius because it's following this point right here the tool so it has it knows in its you know in the mind of the of the control so to speak that it has to move this tool back by the radius because because this point it's following which is this point right here has to move back on a facing cut either coming downward or, or upward so it would move the tool back so in order to compensate for that you have to actually touch the tool off and then move the offset in the radius of the tool so you know if it's a 15 thousandths radius you gotta actually move it in a minus 15 thousandths more to get it to the right place for this one um, the same is true for the, for the ID tool you have to move it in for the OD tool if you you know this kind of tool if you were using a tool with this compensation on an OD or a face cutting cycle you would have to move it down 
because you have to get it to the center of the radius for the offsets of these quadrants. These two are used for back turning tools or for a grooving tool. If you have a say you have an OD groove, this is the same for IDs, it just uses the, the different compensation numbers. So you have your grooving tool starts, your, your finish cut here, and you probably come down and around, and then you would you would might pull out here, then you move your tool over to here, like this, and you'd go down here and around with your tool path to cut your your finish cut. <clears throat> and uh, so this one would be a number three, like this, and this one would be a number four because you're cutting on the back side like this, as if the grooving tool, the two corners of the grooving tool, here and here, like that. And you could pretty much cut any size radius you want in this corner, but if this corner again is smaller than the tip radius of your tool then you may get a cutter compensation alarm well actually it's going to be a tip compensation alarm on a lathe right in this corner because uh, it can't bring the tangency points of the radius to the tangency points of the program contours radius to blow that up if you had a say you have a radius like this and your tip brace your tool to exaggerate it is kind of like this Oop, if I could draw but the the end points of your arc or your radius is right here it has to be able to bring this end points or center points of the radius if you will if you project this to center line of the radius it has to be able to bring these points to these points on the program tool path or else it'll give it'll give a tip comp alarm and on the milling machine this will be the same it would give you a cutter compensation alarm so it'll be better not to program any radius at all if you, if you if this condition exists rather than trying to put too big of a radius in too small of a corner radius so this is the way lathe tip comp works on on a on a milling machine if you if you have a say you have an inside pocket or an outside contour it just depends on which way you're going around it the and your tool say your tool is following this shape going around this way you know all the way around this say pocket basically on the mill it only deals with the radius of the tool and it tries to follow that radius all the way around um, and that's pretty much as simple as it is or, or if you're going around the outside of the shape it's going to follow the radius of the tool around the outside of the shape here so if you're going in this direction it'd be G41 right if you're going this direction it'd be a G42 if, I, if you can read my writing on, on um, that direction and here it's going to be a G41 this way and and if it's going this way be a 42 or you can look at it this way um, 41 is climb milling and 42 is conventional milling on the lathe on the other hand when you're going around the outside of a part like this and around this shape this is going to be a G42 and if you're going say down the face this is going to be a G41 on that on a lathe because this is you're on the right hand side of the contour here and you're on the left hand side of the contour here according to your direction of, of travel on the lathe so base, basically on a OD turning you're, you're using G42 if you're turning in towards the Z minus direction, and uh, on if you're facing down, you're using a G41 for that shape. So 
that's the difference between tip comp and, and cutter compensation like this is is the the where it the machine visualizes the actual tool point for a lathe and and for a milling machine it's just using the center line of the tool and, and projecting the radius over to it. Now some machines can do this and some can't on a milling machine you typically if you say you're going to go around this shape on the mill just this simple shape and you want to use uh, cutter compensation well you could program the actual shape but you have to have a lead in movement and a lead out movement so you bring your you might bring your cutter here a little bit away from the contour and then if you're going this direction it's going to be a G41 because you're on the left hand side of the line so on this line right here you're going to put a G41 so it'll be probably a, a G01 G41 and some kind of feed rate probably and and you would feed down to this line now this this line has to be at least the radius of the tool and preferably a little bit longer than the radius of the tool otherwise you're probably going to either gouge the part if you start it too close it's going to gouge the part and actually go backwards up to your shape some controls will do that some controls will give you an alarm if this is too short so you come down to the shape and the center line of the tool path would be going around here like this and then you would get to this line which is going to be your G40 line. You put G40 here, and you're going to come maybe to this escape point so you don't drag your tool across the part. But what you have to understand about, about these is it's going to bring this tool actually to right here. The center line of the tool is going to come right to this line. Um, it's pretty easy to understand on these 90 degree lines, but if you put say you you had a, a shape like this and you and you want to go around the same shape but you started your tool here and you put your g41 on this line it's going to actually bring this tool on the on that line it's going to bring it right to here the center line of the tool so the center line of the tool if it started here is going to actually travel this way it's not going to travel down your line it's going to travel this way to bring this radius or arc of the tool tangent to this contour. No matter what the shape of the contour is, you could actually, if you, if you were coming, say you were going to go a lead-in movement like this, so that you want to have a nice blend here, an even transition to your shape, and, and you plunged your tool right here on a milling machine when it moves over to the beginning of this arc here it's going to actually put the tool tangent to the arc right here so the tool is actually going to travel well, my picture is not too neat but the, this is your line and the tool is actually going to travel out this way a little bit to reach the tangency point of this arc on the on the lathe it, it does similar things like I, I don't know if you noticed on my first video when we did the face cut coming down we made the little chamfer we did the face cut and we wanted to come to the center line of the part you actually only have to program a compensated toolpath to the center line of the part because it's going to bring the radius of the tool actually right to there on on this tip comp and then it's going to take it away. It actually can calculate this and it's going to actually bring this point if you're using this compensation like we were it's going to bring this point down minus whatever the tip radius of the tool is on the face cut. So that was a correction I had to make in the program because I, I brought it down to minus the, the center line of the part is I brought it down to minus 0.060 but I didn't really need to do that because it'll automatically do that and then you have your G41, or I mean G40 move coming outward away, and it brings the tip of the tool down here because it calculates that based on the radius you have in your in your offset page. So 
um, tip compensation, that's the way it's different than cutter compensation. Cutter compensation is, uh, is actually a, a little bit simpler to understand than tip comp. You can program, I, I remember in the old days when we didn't used to use this, we, we'd have to figure out where this was. So if we're running an angle cut on the lathe, you'd have to actually calculate where the, the tip of the tool was going to be based on, on, on the radius. So you'd actually, this dotted line is what you'd actually be programming even though you were cutting back here depending on the on the tip radius your tool had. But see if you do that you have to redo your program if you change the tip radius of the tool. So with cutter or uh, tip compensation I should say you, you don't have to you don't have to do that. And the, and the same is true of, of a milling machine. In the old days you used to program the center of the tool path and then uh, you know you would cut it with a tool but if you had a reground end mill or something you would have to change this program so what some people used to do is they used to program the center of the tool path and then they would use either a, a minus or a plus I should say minus or a plus on their tip comp so they, they might to set the tool a, a, a little bit over each side of the center line the only problem with that is that it's kind of hard to tell to prove out your program because you're not really going to the numbers or the shape of the part you're going to these numbers that are on the center line of the tool path and it, and it can be kind of confusing if you have a complex shape in a rectangular box or something like this would be easy enough to tell but but you know if you had if you had play, things with arcs and angles and and various things on the mill it would be very difficult to tell if you're in the right places when you prove out the program or if you you know if you're trying to troubleshoot a programming error it's always easier to program the actual shape of the part right off the drawing than to to have to calculate all of these center line tool paths particularly around a complex shape and and the lathe is even sort of more tricky because if you if you're coming down a shape like this you have to calculate where this tip of the tool is either either you're using this one or this one you could actually come down this shape here with this type of shape if you move the the tool path out here a little bit and you could use tip compensation and you could cut it in the right place but then you would be stuck with that value for that tip radius and and it wouldn't work for other tip radiuses. So anyway, I started with this explanation. This this picture here, I mean, these deal with these numbers that are in the tool offset page. And this is what they mean. And so I hope that makes this clear what all that means now. And when we get into the milling machine, we'll get into more of this and how all this interacts with the tool setup and, and your part setup and everything. So I just want to add this on to the first video because I didn't really explain that clearly so you'll understand what all that means. Okay, thanks.